Welcome back everybody to the Roblox Advanced Scripting Series. Today we're going to be talking all about magnitude as we get into part two of the series. Um, and yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So first of all, what on earth is magnitude? Magnitude is a way for us to be able to tell the distance between two 3D objects in our game. For example, if you um, have this part over here and you want to tell how close the part is to the player, then uh, you can do that using magnitude. So let's just go ahead and, um, and start this. I'm going to start by actually inserting a part into the game, and we'll call this um, mag part 1. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be checking, um, we're going to start by having, actually, cut that, let's, um, let's go ahead and duplicate this mag part 1, and we're going to call this um, new part mag part 2. Okay, so we have these two different parts, one called mag part 1, and one called mag part 2. Now let's insert a script into server script service, and we'll call this magnitude script. Okay, so um, let's just figure out how to write magnitude. The way that we do this is by taking two different positions, subtracting them, and then writing dot magnitude. Um, that is just how Roblox's 3D math works, and it turns out that's how a lot of, I believe, a lot of engines like Unity and Unreal also kind of do their thing. Um, obviously, it's a little different, though, um, since they're different game engines. But we can say local distance... So we're going to have a variable with the distance, equals to, and then let's insert parentheses here, game.workspace.magpart1.position minus game.workspace.magpart2.position, and then outside of the parentheses we say dot .magnitude. So that is how you, um, you do magnitude. You literally just take one position, subtract it from another position, make sure it's in parentheses, and then you write dot magnitude outside of the parentheses. So we can go ahead and print distance now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a while loop. So while wait one do, uh, if you do it this way, like that, and then we indent that, uh, you don't have to, but I like to have code indented, um, every second it will print the magnitude. So instead of playing, I'm going to go ahead and click this drop down and click run. And now we should see 32 uh, 32.035, that's the distance in studs between these two parts. But if I move one of them, now we have 58, as you can see, and if I keep moving it, the uh, the distance will keep printing in the output, but it'll be changing values each time because the parts are getting farther or closer away. Uh, like now it's just 2.4 studs away, now it is 7 studs. So that's how you do magnitude. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and see how we could use this in a game. Okay, so let's say for whatever reason, um, you want to check and see which player, whoops, don't want to delete that, uh, is closest to, I don't know, um, maybe maybe a, a finish line, okay? Let's just create a little finish line here, okay? Uh, I'm going to make this red, and I'm going to go ahead and anchor it, uh, anchor. I'll drag it up like it's one of those little, like, I don't know, um, ribbons that you run through at the end of a race. And then finally, I'm going to make can collide turn off. That way, players can run right through it. So, uh, I'm going to call this finish part. Finish part. And now let's insert a new script into server script service. Uh, and we'll call this closest to finish. Okay. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a while loop, just like our last one. We'll say while wow, wait one do. I want to check this every single second, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, every single second, we're going to loop through all the players. The way we do that is we say local players equals game.players and get players. So this right here, I think we did this in our beginner scripting series, can't remember for sure. Um, this right here says game.players colon get players. That will give us a table of all the players in the game. So maybe we have Bob in the game, maybe we have Tim in the game, maybe we have, I don't know, um, Trish in the game, okay? So that'll give us a table with all of the players, which means we can loop through that table. So we can say for i comma v in pairs players do. Now we're looping through every player, and V is going to be the player, right? Uh, and I is going to be the index. So um, V is the current player that we're looping through. So we'll uh, just say, um, actually first we need a variable, a couple variables. We'll say local last distance. 
uh, and we'll set that to math.huge. Math.huge is basically infinity. It's the biggest number that Roblox can handle. So just think of 99999 repeating. Um, so currently, last distance is just the biggest number that Roblox can handle. So basically, infinity. Um, and then we'll say local closest player equals to nil. So again, I don't know if remember uh, we covered this in our uh, beginner scripting series. Nil just means nothing. So the closest player is equal to nil. That means that we don't have a closest player yet. So we have our variable called last distance, which currently is just infinity. And we have our lo uh, closest player variable, which is nobody yet. So uh, the first thing we want to do is find the player's character. So we can say local char equals v.character or v.character added colon wait. I think, again, we did this in our beginner scripting series. I don't remember for sure again. Um, but this will just give us a variable called char, or, or whatever you want to name this. And this will be the player's character. So it's either just going to be the player's character, v.character, or it's going to wait for their character to um, be added into the game. And once it is, then it sets this variable to be their character. So now char is the current player's variable. And, uh, I mean, sorry, a character. So remember, we're looping through all the players. So each time it's going to go back around, loop through the next player, now it's going to loop through the next one, and each time char is going to be the character of the player we're currently looping through. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and insert a dummy into the workspace really fast uh, by clicking avatar, rig builder, block avatar. And if you go ahead and expand any dummy, you'll see this certain part in there called the humanoid root part. Um, this part is, uh, I think it's I think it's pretty big. It's, yeah, it's two by two by one. Um, it's an invisible part that every single Roblox character has, um, no matter it, whether it's R throw, R6, or R15. It's always going to have this part called the humanoid root part. So that's really nice for us as developers because we can use that humanoid root part to check how far um, the character is from whatever we need to check. So we can say local distance equals to parentheses, remember this is magnitude right here, char.humanoid root part, remember that is the, um, the, the part that all characters have, uh, dot position minus game.workspace.finish part dot position dot magnitude. Okay. So this right here is going to get us the distance from the current player we're looping through, right? and the finish part. Um, now we can check to see if that distance is less than the last distance. So we can say if distance is less than last distance, then last distance equals to distance, and closest player equals to V. Okay? I know this may be a little confusing, but it's if you kind of just think about the logic behind this, it makes a lot of sense. We're saying if the distance of the current player uh, and let me try and just visualize this the best I can. I'm going to insert two block avatars, and they're both going to be trying to get to the finish line. Okay, uh, We'll call this guy, um, I don't know, Bob, and we'll call this guy Tim. Those are the examples I had in the script. So Bob and Tim are both trying to get to the finish line, and what we're saying is we're going to loop through all the characters, Bob and Tim, right? That's what this is, for I, comma, V, and pairs players. Now we're taking, we're getting the character of the current player we're looping through. So let's just say we're looping through Bob right now. So now char is Bob, this right here, okay? And we're saying the distance, right? The current distance, this new variable, it's equal to Bob's humanoid root part minus the finish point position dot magnitude or the distance from the finish line to Bob, okay? That's the current distance. Now we're saying if distance is less than the last distance, so if our, our current distance, right, Bob's distance to the finish line, if it's less than or if he is closer than the last player we looped through, then we're going to set closest player, the variable, to be Bob, okay? Because we know that Bob is closer than the last character we, we looped through, okay? So now, now that we know Bob is closer, we're going to set our last distance to Bob's distance. And then it's going to loop through the next player and it's going to see if anybody is closer to the finish line. If anybody's distance is less than Bob's distance, then it's going to re-update uh, re the variable to be uh, that player. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, feel free to leave a comment or try and um, ask in my Discord server. I'm more than happy to help. 
But uh, let's go ahead and actually do something with this. Uh, I'm going to delete Bob and Tim now. I'm going to go ahead and insert a string value into replicated storage. Remember, string values, they hold strings or letters. And I'm going to call this closest player. Okay. And then we're going to uh, always update this uh, to be whoever the closest player is. So we can say closest to finish is equal to... Um, so we can say game.replicatedStorage.closest player, replicated storage, dot closest player, the string value, dot value equals to the closest player. Okay? Now let's go ahead and hit play. And obviously, because I'm the only player in the game, it is going to say that I'm the closest. Uh, but let's open replicated storage and let's check um, closest player. Whoops. Uh, I think I didn't say dot name. That's on me. Uh, remember, string value is a a, val uh, a string. Closest player, the variable, is a player object, so we need to say closest player dot name, the name of the player. Okay. Now, if we go ahead and hit play, we have replicated storage, closest player, and as you can see, is my username right here uh, because I'm the closest player. And if anybody were el uh, anybody else were in the game and they got closer, then it would update that variable. You can test that out with your friends if you want. All right. Here's something I'm going to go ahead and challenge you to do. I'm going to go ahead and end the episode there, but I'm going to challenge you since you're in this advanced scripting series. What I would suggest you try and do now is create a text label, a GUI with a text label that is always updating to say the name of the closest player. Okay? Remember, we, all, we already have the closest player's name in replicated storage, so try to make a text label on your screen that shows the current closest player. Um, that's obviously optional, but I would challenge you to do so if you want to try and um, like advance, your scripting, uh, advance your scripting skills. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, huge shout out to Samuel Ramsey for supporting me on Patreon. If you want to get shouted out, make sure to go check out my Patreon page and support me there. Um, other than that, thank you guys again for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more episodes, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.